Hey Misfits, this is Mitch over at Misfit Model Trains. What is happening y'all? Hope y'all are having a fantastic Tuesday, kind of midweek. So, I know, I know, I know, I'm a little bit behind. Now, if y'all saw the other video that I put out of this 1988, um, I said the number boards and ground effect lights didn't function. I just got off the phone with Janik over at Athern. That's how you pronounce his name, Janik. I'm so sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name. Um, but yeah, I just... Janik told me that they are functions 25 or 24 would turn the ground effect lights on and a 25 which turned the ditch, the number boards on. Uh, they are kind of uncommon to use, um, so it, it would seem, uh, I guess they ran out of lighting functions up in the uh, top 10 light here, <laughs> the top 10 function list <laughs> to use, so unfortunately for those of us that use the MRC throttle, uh, we have to do the uh, shift key for it to get to the rest of the functions but that's fine um, we're actually going to go through all of the functions for this particular locomotive uh, now let's see I was obviously I have it muted right now because I have track power on let's get a look here see I'm going to go ahead and unmute it so we can go through all the functions. F0, that is your headlight. F1 is bell. F2 is your longhorn. F3 is your shorthorn. F4 is your dynamic brakes. It turns that on. F5 is your ditch lights. Um, F6 doesn't do anything, I don't believe. Oh. F6 would basically make the locomotive have flashing ditch lights, but this locomotive doesn't have flashing ditch lights, so... So we're good there. F7 is the dimmer. As well as cab chatter. F8 is obviously your mute button. F9 is alternate mixer, which goes makes the locomotive go to half volume. F10 is straight to 8. So straight to the notch eight. F11 is your brake set and release. Uh, that basically means if you have another locomotive that is currently on the layout that has the same number, you can hit the brakes on this locomotive and uh, it won't move. F13 is your couple uncouple. F14 is your half speed and momentum override. F15 is the handbrake. AGP mode is F16. Fuel loading sequence is F17. I guess we'll go ahead and listen to that.
general service sequence is F-18, F-19 is straight to Ida, but we're already there. F-20 is a steam generator or auxiliary HEP generator on off. F-21 and F-22 are not used. Uh, F-24, this is the big one. F-24 turns on your ground effect lighting. F-25 turns on the number boards. And F-26 is RPM notch up. And F-27, RPM notch down. F-28 is not used. And if you press the emergency stop button, you obviously have... You, the, there is not a Mars light that flashes, so that's fine. Now we're gonna go ahead and mute. So now we have the light, all the lights on. It looks much better. Um, I will say there is still bleed through. And Unfortunately, there's not much that can be done right here about the bleed through. There's bleed through here. There's also bleed through way back here. Um, but that's due to the fact that it's a removable cab. I mean, when you're looking at the front of the locomotive, you really can't tell. Um, that might be solved with some with some black tape on the underside of the cab, on the cab roof. Um, it's not too bad. I wouldn't say it's like so bad that it's you know gonna ruin the model. No, no, no. That that's definitely not the case. And it's not too bad. Uh, the lighting effect on the bottom here is pretty good. Uh, Avon did go all out. Well, all out as much as Athen usually does with detail for their trucks. It's not too bad. The sound the sound quality is pretty good out of a speaker that's way back here. Even though it's a speaker that's mounted uh, sideways. Or it's mounted mounted it's mounted vertical. Um, yeah, it's a big round speaker that Athern likes to use in all their stuff, so um, this would sound a lot better with a scale sound system speaker. Um, but straight out of the box it's not too bad. Uh, it does come with a black horn instead of a red horn, like I believe the last run had. Uh, I believe it's supposed to be red. I'm not sure on this. I'm not sure if the Katie had a red horn or not. That's one thing I'm not entirely sure about. Um, someone will have to correct me in the comments to see if I'm correct or wrong. Uh, so let me know. I haven't seen 1988 in a really long time. Uh, nor have I ever been able to see the top of it for a while. So I don't know what horn is on it. Um, I know it's the standard SD78 UP horn. Um, but yeah, so let's go ahead and check out the interior. Ahead and throw the dimmer on. Mm. Pretty much the same interior as before. Really not a whole lot different. Um, and the the pulsating is not noticeable to the naked eye. It's only noticeable to the camera. Looking closer, there is quite a lot of bleed through up on the top here. Um, again, it's not the greatest to have a whole lot of bleed through, especially when they're LED. Um, there's really not a whole lot, yeah, there's really not a whole lot of wiggle room that you can do to make it so that it doesn't bleed through. Um, it's going to regardless. So, I will say, the headlight and ditch lights are nice and bright, which is how they should be.
Uh, the detail is excellent. They have the typical really flimsy handrail, although that's eh, makes me nervous. Especially when you have to kind of pick it up from the fuel tank or anyone that picks it up from here from the car body. I usually try to go for the fuel tank just because it's much better to pick it up from there. Let's go ahead and flip it around so we can see the other side here. I will have to mute it again. It's not a bad startup sequence, it actually does sound pretty good. Um, I'm not sure if there is a CV function that would allow me to... That would allow it to be able to... Not start up as soon as it touches track power, but so that I can physically make it start up. I'm not sure if there's a function for that. Um, not that it matters, but if there is, that'd be great. Um, The one thing I did kind of wish that I could do on the rest of mine is replace the cabs uh, so they could have the lit number boards as well. But I don't think Atherton is going to, I don't know if I could swap the cabs onto the older Atherton Aces. I'm not, I'm not sure if anything has changed or any mounting points have changed. I'm not sure I haven't opened this thing up to see if there are any mounting point differences. Because uh, I've got 82, 83, 88, 89, 95, and 96, as well as 1111, 1943, and 4141. Uh, in terms of the UP Heritage Fleet, and they're all Genesis, and they're all programmed to run with Big Boy. Uh, but yeah, so this unit is great. It's got uh, the, he the re hang on, there it is. The rear light is nice and bright as well. It still has its, uh, whatever the heck this thing is, it still has that attached to it. I've gotten a few of these where they're broken off. Um, used mainly, which I just had to glue back on, but that's, that's usually the very first part to break off of these, but that's on there nice and, nice and strong, so, yeah. And they would tell you to go ahead and rip these plastic couplers off, but uh, I've learned, given how much these are, uh, just leave them on until they until the springs pop out of them, or or until they snap and break, and then swap them with a metal coupler. Um, I find that's usually much easier, especially on Atherton engines, considering it's a bit of a trick to. Uh, get the all the detail that's in the front and the back out of the way to put the coupler box back in place but that's just me so with that uh, and here's a picture of all six of my heritage units sitting all pretty together hope you guys enjoy that um, but yeah, so uh, expect to see some video of this thing and its mates running a excursion train at some point, or running behind Big Boy, or 3095, or 844 at some point, um, or even with 6936. Uh, my 1988 completes my Heritage SD70 Ace collection of Union Pacific units. Uh, that is the last one I needed to complete it. And so this has been a very long time coming. I'm not going to say I'm definitely not disappointed now. I'm really happy with it. So, yeah. I'm very, very happy with it. So, yeah. Um, this locomotive's MSRP, I believe, is about 320 ish from Horizon. Um, 
which isn't bad. Um, considering everything you get on it. Uh, so. Yeah, so with that, um, I will see y'all in the next one. See ya!